Un Karolis kriminālas raidījums, kriminālas rajons vienkārši. Nu, es zinu, kāpēc tums iestāšanās, ka tur esot briesmi lietas. Nu, tā es esmu dzirdējis. Ka tie ir diezgan tādi slikti cilvēki, kas dzīvo tur tā. Vairāk tādu uzbrukumu ir notikušanu. Nesakoptība. Mājas novārta atstāts. Es redzēju, ka katru dienu ieiet veikalā. Cilvēki iznāk ārā ar alkoholu. Vienmēr viņš iznāk, ka tas ir jauns cilvēks vai vecs cilvēks, viņš vienmēr nopark alkoholu. Tam žīlē uči mnogu ļudzēji. Sīčās un razvalin, razrušan, nikamu nenužan. Ir to žēvējumā tam prodolžājās žīt ļudzi. Vot šo samā tīžola ir pičāļnē. Es gan drūma un melnu tādu tumša. Liepā es tumšā pusi. Sēkas, kas ir ar grafitīnu nozīmētas un tā viss cauri. Tas liecina, un arī šīs saplēstās pudeles un asinas, tas liecina par to, ka... People think that we are monsters. I just can't explain why. They are wrong. This I know. They are wrong. The city lose 25,000 inhabitants, and of course, all those 25,000 inhabitants were spending life in Karavasta. Uh, they lived in Karavasta, they used all infrastructure for Karavasta. In one day, we lose everything. If any the king Radox, Royal Alexander the Kitarichi. Karosta was made uh, at the end of 19th and beginning of 20th century. 50 kilometers from here, from Lepa, there is a border with Lithuania, and Lithuania belonged to Germany. Uh, this part belonged to Tsar of Russia and he was preparing to war with Germans, so he needed very strong protection somewhere here close to the border. Потому что ведь этот и городок, и нуж, нуж им можно попасть и через воздушный нуж и мост, или же объезжая так и, вок, и вокруг. И там нужно так, так стояли шклагбаумы, и, так, и, и, и пускали так лишь... Ну, так с документами и все. Так, так значит, в, так в городок можно попасть всего. И ну что он и построил вот в городке, где сейчас и воинская же часть. Здесь был и госпиталь, и здесь было здание офицерского так и собрания. А потом он и, и построил этот воздушный нуши мост. И чтобы его так и построить, он сюда вызывал из, из Франции этого, так и кто из, и строил во Франции Эйфелева during the Soviet time, that area was closed for civil persons. There lived just military persons and their families. And Karuosta, from the beginning, it was made as absolutely independent uh, town, small town from Lepai town. Mm -hmm. 
бы, знаете, что около нуши моста за мостом, вот, и где сейчас и построили водолазный, а там же чуть и, и подальше были, так сделаны такие, так и бетонные укрытия, и там, так стояла же ракетная же часть. И ракетная же часть, она нуж и могла запускать ракеты в сторону Запада. Видите ли, нуж ракеты, нуж ракеты все так были атомные. Нормально было жить, когда была советская власть. Если что-то не то, обратился и все тебя тебе сделают. А сейчас не, некому обратиться. Некому, потому что никто это не решает ничего. И там такая огромная так и площадь бетонированная, и вот и там был оркестр, и там столько было жителей, и все так и плакали, что уходит армия. Дочь лишь развала Советского Союза. Ведь это так и здесь были же войска, и так и лишь ну, их стали выводить уже, так и когда была и Латвия, и там Эстония, так и Литва уже были самостоятельные. Это так и после Горбачева, он же заявил, что а, за начало Горбачева, а потом и Ельцин, он заявил, и били, и берите же суверенитета сколько угодно, сколько вы и переварите, и все. И кто? То и гражданские, и если они же работали в военных организациях, они уже все, значит, им нужно где-то было устраиваться, а жилье все оставалось. Они же ну, и не могли взять и мебель, обстановку, все было в домах, и люди ну, могли в эту квартиру приходить и жить. It was uh, a possibility for them also to see what has been hidden there for a hundred years. And they entered that area, and if somebody saw that this house has more beautiful door than I have, then 
why shouldn't I take it? They took even bath and uh, sometimes doors and windows and everything that they could take off the, uh, this flat. That was the time when this area was destroyed. It was told for people here in the city center that it's dangerous. When it gets dark, it's dangerous to go there because there are Russians and they will ask you questions. Why are you here and what you are doing and so on. It was a bit dangerous. Uh, they celebrated Russian festivals and everything that involved military celebrations and some parades and everything like that. Birthday of the Tsar of Russia and, and so on. But they didn't celebrate much of Latvian festivals. Um, and the reason might be the one that um, those people were from different parts of Russia and the language that they were communicating, using for communication, it was Russian language. Что здесь будут жить и латышское население, а потом латышское население отказалось, потому что сказали, это так и сейчас у нас, а потом обратно и вернутся же русские и все отберут. All my family live only in this room because it was Soviet Union and we have neighbors right next door. Not, not like next door, but next room. And they have, again, family. And another small family live in the small room. And we have uh, one kitchen for everyone and one bathroom and one toilet. So it was a hard time, how I said. But only because I was a child. For me, it was like, wow, so good. I have so many friends, so big family. So good to live in here. When we moved, I thought, oh, it's like a pit stop, that flat in Karosta. But it wasn't. It was my new home. Now it's my home. I don't know the reason. It just was like a, a letter from the council, like, Sorry, but you should uh, empty this place. I feel now like they steal something from me. They steal my home. And uh, it's not so good. It's not a good feeling. Taxi drivers wouldn't drive you out here. I mean, they said, no, no, we don't bring you out there. Помощи действительно знаю такое, что скорая помощь отказывалась ехать на помощь к маленькому ребенку и что эту проблему решили только тогда, когда позвонили главврачу городу. Это лично было при мне. Кто сумел жить, то живет. Не сумел, погибай. I live in here for 15 years and uh, it's not really so bad place. I mean. I like this place. It's my home. It looks not so good, but it's uh, still good from inside. I remember this building before. It was like yellow color and uh, with bright and uh, I don't remember actually green or blue balcons. So it was beauty. And uh, now it's more like gray. Nobody took care of it, so it became this kind of absolutely lawless territory. And there was no, there was no police, there was no army, there was no nothing, and, and uh, most of it was just demolished and, and, and robbed. In the city, Russian, alcoholic, narcoman and Tell me, please, who am I? All this is in the middle кто сидит, сидят правительств. Вот от чего все это зависит. Во. Правительство вот мутит. Во. А люди, есть люди, люди нормальные люди, нормальный народ, все. Во. Все идет сверху. Во. 
the city council started to make a number of decisions what to do with uh, the buildings in Karuostam and one of the options was also to have some partner organizations to support us in this particular uh, business. Uh, we asked the private sector to participate in renovation and also to rent those buildings from the city. Uh, but unfortunately also the private sector was quite poor in this period of time. Ну, с точки зрения постороннего человека, причем простого, то выглядело это так, что это просто все было брошено, и как любое брошенное хозяйство, оно стало просто разрушаться. И именно такое впечатление, и думаю, что это не только впечатление, и правда, что городок это как раз то последнее место, которое будут приводить в порядок. Uh, metal points where you could give metal and get money for it, yeah? And all of them were open 24 hours a night. Several, not one, two, three, but like four, five, six in the area. So people just took things, sell it. So the, the place was robbed in a very, very short time. And so this legend about when the Soviet army left, everything was demolished, it's not true. It was left in a quite good condition. And then the robbery and, and the lawlessness that happened like the year and year and a half after. And then it continued and it still continues in, in, in some senses. А к старому человеку кто пойдет? Грабить меня нечего. Они всех на изучено знают. У кого золото, у кого деньги, у кого доллары. А у нас что, вот церковные копейки. Сами люди, я же говорю, сюда в основном раньше переселяли людей, после того, как все развалилось, именно за неплату квартир. В первую очередь, это кого? Это неустроенных людей, в частности, страдающих там алкоголизмом или еще чем-то. Естественно, это городок не украсит. А, тут я недавно, два года назад, мне здесь квартиру дали. И мне очень обидно было, когда в газете читаешь, что военный городок – это отрубье города. Как это понять, что вот здесь посылали людей, у кого нет денег, которые не могут там за квартиры заплатить, сюда переселяли. Но они же такие же люди, как мы все. Они же не виноваты, если они думают одеть ребенка или заплатить за квартиру. From Liepaja city, city people, they have always looked upon Karost as something alien, something apart. Yeah? And then all of a sudden it's not. All of a sudden it's actually no more these uh, schlagbaums or these uh, um, closed areas. You can go here, and, well now you can't because of the bridge. But uh, so there is, if you go to the mental mind of people, then that, that has been growing in from, from, from uh, generation to generation that there is Liepai and there is Karosta, that's two different things. And from 1994, all of a sudden, it's an open area again. Yeah. Maybe they are from good part of the city, I mean city centre. Maybe their parents have uh, good cars and a uh, good job. But I don't think that they are different. They also smoke cigarettes in 10 years somewhere, I don't know. I did it in the forest or on the beach. But maybe they have some, I don't know, underground place or something like this, so where they can hide. But I don't think so, but I know that we are same. But they think that only because I am from Karasta, I'm not same like, like them. When I was a child, me and my friends, we always like uh, hide in that place. And uh, it was funny. We have some 
uh, favorite places in there. I remember some room. It was like, like no others, and uh, we always smoking there, and uh, it was like uh, our our own place, and nobody know about it. We saw it like that, but <laughs> people can visit it anytime they want. So when I was about eight or nine, or maybe even seven went to the shop and asked for one bottle of vodka, for example, just for fun. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't a problem to get it. Just I can say like, this is from, from, for my dad. And uh, yeah, why not take it? <laughs> it was easy. I remember this place when I was too young, about, I'm not sure actually. I found in here a lot of beautiful wood pieces. It looked like wood pieces in there. But it was like this, with the holes inside and different sizes, yeah. I collect them in the one bag. I saw that I can uh, give all this and present to my mom. When I went home, I met the woman and she told me, what are you doing? What is in your bag? And I said, it's uh, wood pieces. And she told me, this is uh, bones, human bones. So after that, I went back and put all of, the, all of them back uh, near the sea on the beach, right on the stones. It was it was shock for me, but not for a long time. I just remember the day when I have full bag of human bones. Вот за городком туда в сторону, так и нуж нуж расстреливали девцы. Так здесь об этом и есть история написана, что так здесь же расстреливали военнопленных и евреев. Там и был уже, ну же ездил, фотографировали мы. This place is beautiful not because of bonds. I like this place since I was too young to speak. I can swim in here, I can dream in here, I can sleep in here. Maybe not in winter time, but in summer. Easy. Why not? Just for relaxing. Me and nature, nothing else. People just know that the this part of the city is like a uh, end of the city, so maybe they found this place like a good place for killing or to trying to leave the body. Why? I just don't know why. But I remember a lot of stories when somebody was found in somewhere, like in the empty house uh, or right uh, behind the pub or in some empty or even not empty flat or somewhere else. So it's like, it's like normal here. Maybe somebody killed somebody for some reason. He knows that uh, this body will be found, but he doing like special. I will go and put it in Karasta because it's the place where the bodies were found not once, not twice, not even ten times.
the people think bad about Karosta only because they remember the time when Karosta was like a place where where people who don't pay their bills or I don't know why had problems with the uh, living area in town and they must be like uh, moved in here so it was the beginning when the people start thinking that Karosta is not so good for living and for like uh, Karosta is not so safe they must try it from inside try all this life from inside not like uh, they can see it like all these grey buildings or empty houses or abandoned houses no I mean maybe they need just one chance to try it to be like us to live in this place to buy something in our shops to wear our uh, clothes so we are same We don't need a hero, we need uh, just a uh, good man and a lot of hands. In Lepaje people call him Kalle, he is from Sweden and he came here, he is artist himself and he was so impressed about the things that he saw in this area. Uh, he made this K-Alpha 2 organization and uh, they are also, they own few of the buildings from um, SARS time. They have made art gallery, contemporary art gallery K-Alpha 2. Like uh, they had so wide program, uh, so many projects like uh, uh, learning Latvian for free for Russian people or kids room or some I don't know workshops or celebration of uh, some holidays like together so they have so many four people from Karosta still have they uh, play a really big part in our lives The meaning of Kea 2, it has two meanings, yeah? It's uh, because it's the name of this house, is Cathedral Street number two, so it's K2 is very simple. But also in Latvian, legs is Kaaya. Uh, so to walk by foot, in Latvian you say K2. You walk by K2, yeah? So that's walking by foot. And that's what we did in the beginning, we had no funding, nothing, so we just walked around, tried to make some deals. So. So that's one. And then if you use this leg, leg thing, then I think that K2 is standing on two legs. One is extremely local, like even so local that it's not Liepaja, it's, it's a Karostan leg, yeah. But the other leg, I think, is very international. It's, uh, it's, it can take this leg to Europe or to North America or to Australia or, 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 or South Africa, or whatever you need to open to Moscow, no problem, because um, since we who started this out, we come from film documentary background and we're traveling quite a lot and be with a big network of all kind of creative artists from all, all over the world, not to exaggerate at all. So bringing in here uh, good artists, um, high professionals, uh, wasn't, wasn't any problem in the beginning and is even easier today. And um, so that's the international leg. So I think Kea2 stands for uh, a joint venture between extremely local and, and, and very global. Yeah? It's something that matches good together.
Katsu came to the city with proposal. Could you rent us those buildings for a very symbolic price? And at that period of time, of course, city council made decision, yes, we are willing to rent. And for example, today they are paying one, uh, one uh, pound for, for year just to rent those properties. Yeah, therefore, this was only one way how to protect existing buildings. Now we have a master plan, we do have that, and I think it's a very logical master plan that um, there is a center where you can live and where you can eat, and you can call it either a hotel or a hostel or whatever, but one unit where there is uh, uh, eating, sleeping, uh, like a headquarter. Yeah. And uh, then there is one unit that is for education, and then one unit, which is an exhibition hall or conference center, where the students that are being taught, they can also show their works. And now you see it on a scale that maybe is like this, that there is 15 students making a small exhibitions. But what we see in our master plan is that in some years from now, there is 80 or 100 students that make several exhibitions in the big house. It's the same thing, it's just growing organically. Hello, how are you? Mums jauno mēdīju māksliekiem ir liels prieks, jūs šovakar šeit redzēt tik lielā kuplā skaitā. Paldies, kas es izrādījuši tādu interesi par mūsu pirmo kopdarbu izstādi. Mēs aicinām jūs būt kritiskiem, sasildīties ar karstvīnu uz ART, baudiet, izstādi ir attārši. I remember when I first time came to K2, so it was so happy for me, like wow, this is really good center for kids, because they have kids room in there. We had like a chance to use the internet for free and PC computer. One of the first one, like uh, Pentium One or something like this, and uh, they have some games or playing stuff like for children. It was so happy for me. Just found this place like uh, not second home, no, but like a kid dream. I remember one very positive feeling that I got from the local community was when we started to uh, put in this um, what do you call it, central heating system in this house. Yeah? And then you started to feel a rumor that you got positive response from, from the locals say, oh, they are serious. Because you don't, you don't put in so big money and so uh, no big effort into a building if they don't continue to stay. I don't think, but I know that when we started out here, everybody said that. No use, uh, if they are so stupid, then let them do it, and so on. And I know that in those days we were looked upon like, uh, okay, artists come in, maybe they'll paint some of the windows in pink color and for one summer and paint some graffiti on some walls and, and then they will disappear. I mean, this was the attitude. Yeah. But then step by step, real results, uh, renovations, uh, international events, uh, publications, you know, some kind of rumors and some kind of vibrations and so, and then 
in the period from 2003, four, five, six, then it was like, whoa, something's happened. And then the bridge <laughs> went away. And then all of a sudden, all these hopes kind of, they shattered in some sense. One of our mates came to us and said, hey lads, have you seen what's happened with the bridge? And we said, no, what's happened? And he said, like, uh, you should go and watch on it. And it was so fucking terrible, because no more bridge. It's really, really bad for Karasta people. I think that bridge destruction was made by city council, especially, because we had uh, a lot of news that uh, city council want to close the bridge, but because of people they can't. Because keep people every day, all the time using this bridge. So they just can't do that. And they find the way. They took a uh, tanker, empty one, and when, when it uh, leave the port, uh, it just uh, go to the bridge and destroy it, just like this. So it's the end of the story. I mean, they did what they want. The bridge is closed. It's easy. I think it's clever. Clever for them, not for us. This comment I heard approximately 12 minutes after the bridge went away. Uh, it was not, okay, 13 minutes, but not more. Um, it was a telephone call because I went, I, was, I didn't see the accident, uh, but our bookkeeper saw it and she told me to go down and have a look because she thought something was wrong with the bridge. And I went down and I saw it, <laughs> and then when I stand and I look at this, my mobile telephone is ringing and a friend of mine said, it's fixed. Previous year we started a search for funding and with national government we find resources to renovate this bridge. And we are planning in this year to finish this particular project. It means the bridge will uh, be historically uh, designed like it was, but of course with new uh, technical equipment. Just yesterday or two days ago, I read on the web that the bridge should be up and running by the end of this year, which I can't believe, but if it's written, then let's hope for it. And then means that there will be a connection again, and then we can keep on working. But right now, there is not a good connection. Not on this level, not on this level, and not on any level, actually. It's a, it's a big chaos right now. Тут изменение идет наоборот, все не в лучшую сторону, а в худшую. Почему бы здесь дорожки не сделать, свет не поставить, лавочек нет. Вот люди здесь поставить бы здесь лавочки, люди, люди бы могли отдохнуть, посидеть. Ничего нет. Видите, ничего совершенно нет. Ухудшается все, все платы и так далее. Чем дальше, тем, тем, тем больше дерут деньги за все, за свет, за воду. За воздух уже будут брать воду, деньги. Of course, uh, we are not ready in one day to take down all buildings, uh, which also are built uh, during the Soviet time. Uh, but step by step, I think this particular uh, block housing area 
will be redeveloped and therefore usually with potential investors I visiting Karvasta myself uh, but uh, of course we need a little bit more time to make the changes uh, of course there is always question maybe the best way is to save like it is because if there will be number of changes then the car was to will also lose something uh, therefore in fact it's a very hard uh, decision making process also for politicians uh, which direction to choose we have a number of projects which is under development for example a swimming pool uh, which will be built and partly used by uh, Latvian Navy and also partly by inhabitants of Liepāja city. I had about swimming pool about five or maybe even more years ago. Maybe they will, I mean, they will build this swimming pool and uh, makes like dream come true. But something tell me from inside that it will be like not for people from Karosta. If it will be like so good and so new, it will be expensive. Karosta's people can visit it, this place maybe once. So. I think people who live in Karosta, like me, start thinking like now we have some respect between us between me and my neighbors and the other people because because uh, we're living like and uh, close eyes on all this uh, talking like Karosta is not so good and uh, we close eyes on all these people which have uh, real problems with alcohol or drug using so yeah, it starts like with respect. Everyday life is full of contrast, really, positive and negative, black and white. Uh, for any creative person, I think it's it's a must to have the, the contrast. And in Karosta is full of contrast. My favorite thing in Karvasta, I think it's military prison because that was one of the first things that I knew and that I saw in Karvasta. Нравится. Мне здесь нравится, почему? Потому что море. Здесь я купаюсь. Воздух здесь хороший. Потому что это какой-то рай есть, это тут море рядом, все тут рядом есть. Тут жить хорошо, тут неплохо. Что в центре жить, это вообще ужас, там одни дымы и все. It's still my Karosta. It's still my home. It's still the place where I like to spend my life. Что по-прежнему здесь очень много зелени, нету никаких заводов. То есть, ну, скажем, экология относительно всего остального хорошая. Ну и, наверное, сила привычки. Человек привыкает ко всему. К этому тоже. I can close my eyes for a moment and uh, see like uh, another life in Karosta. Another life not for me, but for all people in here. And uh, it's really like a happy life. Without problems, not, not without problems, everywhere is problems, not because of living area, but like uh, without all these bad stories, without all these uh, wrong opinions, without all these 
abundant houses and uh, with good future and with sunny days. Ну, знаете, что я так и, и военным городком воздух, море ж рядом. И знаете, и я и на море так и бегаю, я купаюсь и зимой. И в, в этом октябре и в ноябре, ну, уже если так и снег вы и замерзл уже тут. Однажды иду да, из моря и бегу, одна меня останавливает и женщина, но она меня не знает, уже фотографируется. А вы что, вы еще живы? А в школе в, в седьмой да, сказали, что вы уже умерли. Это нуж и мои конкуренты. For somebody like for me, Kara stays home for all life. I know that this place is so beautiful, but now it's like have dirty face. And somebody can help to wash this dirty face.